All right, Natalie, thank you for being on with me today. Appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. Always enjoy chatting with people. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so I want to start off with something about wellness. When you think about the word wellness, what pops into your mind right now when you think about that? I just think of a, a state of being that you are content with. Mm. Like you are content with how you feel. You feel good. You feel happy. You feel joyful. And you feel confident in that expression or, or in that state. So what do you think maybe the the difficulty is in achieving that state for so many people while we struggle with getting to a point of feel, feeling well or contentment? I think because a lot of people don't know what it is to be well, even mm. for themselves. Like, I don't think they've yes. defined it, right? So I yes. think a lot of times we're going through life and, you know, society is saying, oh, we should feel this way or we should do these things. Or you look and you see your friends are doing these things or accomplishing certain things. And you just feel like, you're supposed to do this or you're supposed to go to this place. You're supposed to feel all these things. And so you're not actually sure. And so when you chase other people's definitions of whether success, of purpose, of joy, of happiness, you can't possibly be fully fulfilled because it wasn't your idea in the first place. And so sometimes the things that we're chasing are actually completely contradictory to what would actually bring us that fulfillment. But we never stated that for ourselves. Right. So it's like you've got to know what what is it for you? Like I was just talking to somebody the other day and she was asking me about impact. And we're both coaches. And she was saying she wants more impact. And she was asking me what my idea of impact is. And I said, I don't need the more. That to me is I said, for me personally, I said, if I impact one person, that is enough for me. I said, if if one per if I have one coaching client and they say my life has changed because of your program. Or if I send out my email and I have someone respond to me and say, this email really encouraged me today, that is how I measure my 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 impact in the world. That's enough for me. For somebody else, maybe they need the thousands or the hundred thousands. And there's no right or wrong. Yeah. It's just got to be personalized. You got to do what works for you. I think that, yeah, definitely the individualization, I think, is important. What Maybe this is an obvious thing, but what is it that we've been chasing? Or maybe we've been socialized into chasing to become well. I think we're just, that's, a, that's an interesting question, but let, let me think of it from a social media perspective, firstly, okay. um, and I am not a social media person, but <laughs> if you go on social media, which is good because it gives you a good lay of the land of right. where are we at as a society? What are we thinking as a society? It gives you, you know, you, a higher level. And when we type in wellness, like everybody is you know, doing specific routines, right? So it's like, oh, I've got the matcha, I've got the green juice, I've got the smoothie, I'm doing Pilates today, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing X, Y, Z classes, and oh, I scheduled in my self-care, right? And it's it's very much like a checklist. Yeah. But then on the other side, if you sit and you read some of the comments, even from some of these creators, they'll talk about how they're burnt out, or they feel lonely, they feel disconnected. So it's like, so are you actually well, or are you just portraying what society thinks as well? And that's the reason why for me personally, I really struggle with using social media because on a fundamental level, it doesn't align with my values for what wellness would look like for me. Because wellness to me looks like me engaging with people in real life or in conversations or in person, but not like just scrolling, looking at things. And that it's not a judgment for anybody else. It's just for me. I'm a very in the moment, in the present type of person. And then if not that, then I'm going to be relaxing. Yeah, <laughs> and I do not yeah. find social media relaxing. So the things I do for my wellness and well-being are things that are completely offline. So how would I even show that? Do yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like you've got to you've got to know what is it, what is it that you're even going after? And and does that actually fulfill you at the end of the day? Does it make you feel that sense of, oh, I feel well, I feel good. Because some people are doing things they don't even feel good after doing it. What's know. the point? <laughs> I know. Actually, you know, the social media comment, actually, it resonates really hard. We have a very similar idea about this. About, I'm going to say six, seven years ago, I got off pretty much all of it except for LinkedIn. And because uh, it also did not align with, I want to talk to people like this. You know, yes, I want yeah. to have talk. I want to go to coffee shops, have conversations and things of that nature. But what's interesting is, 
Now, this is just through anecdotal evidence through my show, 700 episodes. I would say 95% of people say they just don't like social media. They really right. don't like it. And then my next question is, why do you use it then? And then, the, yeah. well, I, I feel they say the word, I need it for my business. I'm like, well, do you? I'm like, well, I'm just asking, not for my judgment, but it's like, right. have you ever asked yourself these questions for that? Also, there's a tremendous amount of data that's also telling us, indicating that this is really not great for us for that. It's a mismatch with what we need as humans versus what the technology is giving us for yeah. that. So I think that we're all in many ways deceiving ourselves and not asking these tough questions about it. Yeah, you know what? It's a it's a slippery slope. And it's funny because I am questioning myself as we speak every single day. And I'm trying to find less and less reasons to be on there. And when I do go on there, I I literally I pick up my phone, I upload real or whatever, whatever. And it, it always takes me longer yeah. than it's supposed to. But <laughs> you know, I put up my post and then I'm gone. I'm I'm done. Yeah. So people will be like, Oh, didn't you see my post? And I'm like, No. And they're like, But you're on Instagram. And I was like, No, I don't think you understand how I use it. <laughs> I, I just upload. I'm like, I upload and I I'm out. Like I'm like, I might not even see your comment. Like if I have the notification, maybe, but I usually just swipe away. Like, you know, so and and even right now, because truthfully, I would love to just delete it altogether. I will say for my business, I've had people check my Instagram page almost like a business card, like just as like a proof mm, of concept, like a proof of concept of who I am. So I'm like, okay, fine. I guess there, there needs to be something for me to, for them, you know, for them to see. I do like LinkedIn a lot. I, I almost don't really classify that as yeah, um, it's social not, media yeah, because I feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy that. I enjoy being on LinkedIn and actually I need to get back onto it. Um, I, I haven't been using it as much as I'd like to, but, but people have to ask these questions and ask themselves, like, how do they feel? And also like something I noticed about myself, the rare time I'm on LinkedIn or on Instagram, and I happen to see a pose, like I couldn't, couldn't get out fast enough. It's like, am I feeling jealous or am I feeling mm. like, oh, why does this person have this and that? And then I have to check myself and be like, you know what, when I was in my own little bubble, I didn't have those feelings, but social media is designed in such a way. Yeah. And it's literally designed, right? People are there to make you feel inadequate. That that's what the design is. It's to it's to make you want more, to make you gravitate to something else or to buy something and to stay obsessed with other people. That's just how it's designed. People get paid a lot of money to make it obsessive, right? So it's nothing, it's nothing on you. It's not about our willpower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I think that's a lot of times people think, like, <laughs> no, there's a lot of smart people who are paid a lot of money to collectively figure out how to sabotage you using social yeah. media. That is what it is. It is. That's the truth behind it and is a, a very good understanding of the human condition, uh, how people connect with other people. And it's almost, it's like the slot machine effect. You know, it's essentially a very same, the bright, shiny things on a floor people see, they gravitate. It's the moth to fire flame. And, uh, and then, hey, keep the eyes on there. Keep your eyes on me. And exactly. it, it's generally making people feel really bad about themselves for that. So it's funny you say, look, creators will put out a projection of what they think people want to see. But in, on the behind the scenes in the back of the house, there's a lot of sadness and depression there for that. And uh, I think we're I think we're trying to grapple with wellness. We're trying to grapple with like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, and, and honestly, I don't even. I think truthfully, some people haven't been, a, I, I'm not sure if I should say afforded the opportunity mm. or maybe life circumstances. They just haven't been a, in a situation where they do feel well. Like they may have never had a time in life. Yes. And I, I do want to be cognizant of that, right? Some people have very difficult lives. Like they're kind of born into a difficult life and just stay right. in a difficult life the whole time. The caveat to that is I truly do believe we all have the power to change our lives and to... um make decisions that can at least take us down a different path. And if we follow that path, we can we can get to a different outcome eventually. So if anybody is listening and they feel, you know, very discouraged and they're like, well, I've never felt well, I've never felt good. I've never felt uplifted or encouraged or, or confident in my own skin or my own state of being. Um, I do hear that. And I would just encourage you to kind of quiet the noise, like society is loud and people are loud. And I think we have to just tap back into ourselves and be like, 
forget what's happened in your life before or even what's happening in your life right now. Like, what would you want out of life? If anything was possible, how would you want to feel? What would you want to be doing? Who would you want to be spending time with? Right. And then you at least have a vision and you can just move forward to towards that. So it's, it's just about forward momentum with my clients and coaching. That's what we're all about. Forward momentum. The past is the past. Sometimes it can weigh us down and we feel like we can't detach from that experience. But I think like everything that happens to you in life, it's brought you to where you are now. And the thing is about where you are right now, you're not stuck. So you can move forward. You can choose a different path. You can learn. You can grow. You can evolve. That's life. A tree doesn't stay the same size forever, and neither do we as people. <laughs> yeah, uh, we both have kids, so we see them growing up, and it's like, wow, like you know, like you're you're just kind of shocked every time. It's like Very there's shocking. always new opportunity for growth, and I think, um, you know, my son, he's only two, but I think just looking at him, he really inspires me because I'm like, he just reminds me there's always a new opportunity, and the way he approaches the world is very different. Uh, than the way I approach it. And I think sometimes if we feel stuck, we can just look to little people because those young <laughs> ones, they, they have, they, they're, they're not weighed down. They, they no. have free minds and it's, it's really nice to watch their bliss. It really is. It's uh, I often uh, I tell my wife this and like, it's almost like, you know, imagine if someone came to this planet and they knew none of the customs or rituals or, you know, societal norms. That's basically a child. Like they, they don't yes. know anything. And it's the wonder and the awe that they experience uh -huh. on or everything's new to them, all these different experiences. And like you said, I think the word they haven't been weighed down yes. by things. And and at some point in our lives, that weight starts getting heavier over the time. And, you know, as you get into teenage years, adult years, I think a lot of I, I noticed that with a lot of really young people, they struggle to want to deal with adult issues. It's just heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. And then go back to what you're saying, like asking those questions. What's interesting is getting people to slow down to even think about those questions. What's some advice for that to get people to actually start thinking about that? Yeah, and I love this question because I do a lot of wellness workshops or even with my clients, too, but specifically in workshops. Yeah, I try to create that space right then and there. Because I know if I tell them, go home and think about this, they're no not going to do it. No, no, no <laughs> so, way. So I'm like, I've got you for an hour, an hour and a half. We are doing this right. And I, I'm, I'll have them. They'll be like, oh, you want us to do this now? And I'm like, right now. Take 10 minutes. I'm not, you know, we don't, I think sometimes we think it has to be like two, three, four hours mm -hmm. of, we might not have that, but take what you've got. And even if you just do one question at a time, but just sit and write it out. I think. I think a lot of times we think we're, we're, people are always thinking we're always in our thoughts. We're always in our head, get it out of your head and get it onto paper. Because when you get things onto paper, you can confront truth. Right. And a lot of people don't like the truth that that's comes true. back at them, but that's where we got to start. <laughs> <That is laughs> I have clients be like, Oh, I didn't realize this is what I was thinking. And I was like, well, it's, it's there now. So now we can deal with it. Right. So I would, I would say just, you know, get a journal or even if you want to like text yourself, but like on a Google, I have like a running Google doc that that's my way of doing journaling, but there is something about actually typing or using your hands to somehow get that information out and just start by asking yourself, like if anything was possible, what would I want in life? Mm. How would I want to feel? And I feel like those two simple questions just start there. And 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 then you can ask yourself because you can ask yourself the same question and actually get different answers. Um, so I just did a workshop like two weeks ago and I asked them the same question, I think four times. <laughs> I think the second time they were like, okay, you already asked this. The third time they were annoyed. The fourth <laughs> time they were like, gosh, my answer changed. <laughs> and I remember this guy looked at me and I was like, Well, I didn't change it. Like it's it's yeah. you who changed your answer because you are getting deeper into that connection and awareness with your own self. But I think a lot of times in life, we we answer a question once and we're done. We're on to the next thing. Yeah. But it is something to sit with a question and ask yourself day by day, even month by month, year by year. We evolve, we change. Like as we learn more, our opinions change, they shift. And we have to give ourselves that permission. I think sometimes like other people want to limit you and they'll be like, oh, well, you're this kind of person or this is the way you think. And it's like, well, maybe that I was that way, Yeah. but now I've, I've grown. So don't hold me to the old version of me. I'm a new version of myself and I'm anticipating I'm, there's another version of myself to come that I haven't yet come into contact with. 
right? Because I, I don't know, people who just think like people stay the same for life, like gosh, if that A, that's not how life works. And B, if that oh, is how your life is working, well, I don't know what to tell there's you. There's some problems happening. <laughs> there's some problems, yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, there are certainly, you know, it does happen sometimes people, you see people who become much older and older and it's like, wow, you still have that mindset. And like, it's interesting. Like what happened? I was thinking like, what happened? Like, there's like something got stunted there. Um, but talk a little bit about kind of the, the you talked about asking those questions. Uh -huh. What's the fear in that of confronting those questions? What What is that in people that you think is like, it scares them to dive into that? I think it's fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of people who don't even want to dream of possibility mm. because they don't know how they would actually get there. And because they don't have that crystal path, they they don't want that unknown, right? So it's like if they could dream because somebody was going to tell them this is a step A, B, C, D to get to that dream, then of course. Like if you, if you said, okay, if someone said, I want to be a millionaire and somebody else said, okay, I'm going to show you the 10 step process and guaranteed you follow these 10 steps, you're going to be a millionaire. Of course you're going to dream of being a millionaire. Because you've got the, the exact roadmap, right. but that's not life, right? And a lot of people are not comfortable with potentially going down that path and realizing all the hiccups that come with trying to be a millionaire and then, whoa, and back to square one and, whoa, these people spoke against me and, whoa, this failed and, whoa, this is more work than I thought, right? And so sometimes we just, we, I think people just want to be comfortable and um, they don't want to step out and, and and push themselves. But I think you sabotage your own potential of what you can do in this world. And I think we're all here to be great. And that that what great means is different for each person. Yep. But I think if you can tap into your greatness and how do you impact the world? How do you, how do you contribute to this world? I think if we can do that and live from a place where we feel like we are serving our purpose, I think we just live a much more fulfilled life and that we can be happier in life. There's a lot of people who are not happy. For sure. Most definitely. What's what's interesting is often people will, in, in the name of comfort, they'll take a loss in order to be comfort, comforted. Yeah. Instead of like, okay, over here, this is the positive. This is the horizon over here is very positive, but it's foreign. There's no experience with this goodness. Yeah, you know, they'll take the the loss or the negative part because it, it's it's at least familiar. Familiarity yeah, what they know. Is really can be very dangerous. Absolutely, it, very because it could be a negative familiar situation. You're like, well, it's bad, but I like I know what's coming. <laughs> you know, and then that's what we see. That's why people end up in staying in toxic relationships, yeah. abusive relationships, and you know, you're on the outside looking in, and you're like, come on, get right. out. But that feels safe for them. Right. And, 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 and safety is a, is an important word too, because I'm not suggesting it's easy to step out the comfort zone sometimes. And sometimes some people naturally have personality, you know, my natural personality, I'm just kind of a rule breaker. <laughs> so I'm just going to go chart my own path sure. and figure it out. Right. YOLO. But not everybody's like that. And not everybody was afforded that opportunity. Some people grew up in very structured environments or very rigid or very, um, controlling so they don't even know how to step out because they just never kind of had that experience and I think so many things that limit us as adults it, it starts from childhood right yeah. they talk about how the way that we are it's basically cemented in our brain by the time we're seven and it all your ways of knowing is just whoever you grew up around whatever yeah. you observed whatever you saw a lot of the times those people who are afraid to step out it's because whatever family or household they grew up in they observe people who did the same Right. And so we can't change and we can't change the past, but it is something to go back and just kind of heal those hurts and just recognize like, okay, this is what happened. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a death sentence. There's no death sentence um, given to us just from how we were born, no matter what situation you started out in, like you have the power and the ability to change your life from this point forward. Whenever you make that decision, I, I truly do believe that you just make the decision and then you commit to it. Right. And you got to take action on, well, what am I going to do differently? Because you can't be deciding things in your head and then go and do the yeah. same thing all over again. Right. Like, yeah. And I think that's the hardest part. It's easy to, to make a decision. It's, it's a whole other thing to take action and then stay committed to it. I mean, these are, man, I, everyone who's going to listen to this, and you and I both probably know, and 
many people in our lives and who have thought about something and it sounds so good. And whether it's moving somewhere, starting a different job, whatever, starting your own company, whatever, and just that action and commitment part is like, it's so big. It's a tsunami of a wave. What are the ways to help people kind of not see it as this overwhelming thing to do and start to create action? I think the first thing is you start with the absolute smallest stuff mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times the reason why people don't even start is because they want to think it the whole way through <laughs> yeah. the step journey. Yeah. They want to sit and plan all 10 steps, but really success comes through momentum and just doing. So if you would just figure out what step one is and then just do it, even if you don't know, just try it. And it's completely fine. I think if we accepted failure right from the beginning, like I'm going to try this and I might fail and that's okay. Right. If we just gave ourselves permission to fail from the very beginning, yeah then we would just feel more free to, okay, well, I already know the worst case scenario. I'm just right back at square one. <laughs> and so you just start, right? And you start with that small step and you see what happens. And then once you do step one, then you do step two and you, or even step 1.5. And then you see what happens and then step two. So it's about those little baby steps because what you're trying to do is build the discipline. And we just live in a, a society where people are not disciplined. Right. We, we just, you, you start a diet today and then, and and I'm calling out myself at the same time. So please believe I'm not an expert in this. I, I'm decent at times and at other times I'm not, right? That's that's the truth. But I can tell you that if you can be disciplined in something and if you can build your discipline in something, the more you will be successful, the more momentum you'll create. And like, what is your idea of success? Because you might want to start a new business and maybe you get to path step, the seventh step and you realize like, I, I actually don't like this or yeah. like this doesn't align with me. That's okay. Like some people say, oh no, you got to keep pushing because this is what you went to school for. This is idea. Like we don't yeah. have to die. You don't have to kill yourself, right? For that one idea. Right. You are allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to put something down and say, you know what? This is not working for me or I gave it my best effort, but it just, it just, it doesn't align with me anymore. I think sometimes people feel, especially even in work, I was just talking to a friend and she's a teacher and she desperately desperately wants out of the field mm -hmm. but she's like oh i spent all this time and money going to school to be a teacher like what will everybody think and i'm like come on like at the time when you went to school that's what you wanted to be and you've done it you've done it you're a teacher great you are allowed to change your mind and go down a different path and it doesn't take anything away from the years that you were a teacher and from the difference that you made in your students at that time there, if you still want to work with students, there's other ways that you can do it besides being a full-time teacher. And if you decide you don't want to be a teacher at, at all anymore, that doesn't take away from everything you've done already. It, all you're doing is giving yourself permission to go down a different path. And you should be able to decide that, not anybody else in their opinion. Most definitely. By the way, I, I love that success through momentum. That's beautiful. I mean, that is, that's literally it. It's, it's a, uh, shaping base mentality, a uh, theory of just chunking your way towards a larger thing. Small things lead to larger things. And one of the things that I was thinking about this too, when you're saying is, I think we also have this mindset, this, uh, this kind of like hustle grind mentality, which is like, you got to hustle your way to wealthiness or to mm -hmm. be like, you have to like just grind constantly. Now, listen, there's something to that. But on the other hand, not everyone is trying to become uh, multimillionaire or yeah. that's not everyone's goal. Like wealth yeah. is not everyone's goal, but I feel like that's always kind of a thing is like, well, you got to keep scaling. It's like a scaling. You need to keep scaling your business, keep scaling, keep growing. Yeah. Like, not everyone wants that. There's Absolutely. always, there's going to be a business owner is like, I like being a one of one. I'm really not trying to franchise this thing. I just like doing this and I'm good with that. We we look down on people like that. Like, oh, they're not that ambitious. Yeah. But that's not for everyone though. The, the way this scaling mentality, you know. No, and this is why I say my one of my probably my favorite quote in life is to thy own self be true. You've got to know what you want yeah. and you stick to what you want, right? You've got to define what does success look like for you? Yeah. What does it what does feeling good, feeling accomplished? look like for you perfect example with scaling like at this point i do one-to-one -one coaching and i absolutely love it i love the Dang. impact that i can make with a one-on-one -on -one client i can't I, at this point i'm not 
interested in doing group coaching or anything like that because I can't get as intimate in the conversations. We can't have the same level of breakthroughs. Yeah. At some point in life, maybe I'll change. I also know I, I only want to do coaching part-time because I do public speaking and I, I do lots of other things. And I need the freedom to be able to do lots of things. I do not want my calendar weighed down with all these coaching clients. And now I feel like I'm I'm stuck to them, you know, like I have no other option. So, and like, I remember telling it to some people, they're like, oh, well, most coaches are full time. I was like, that's, that's great for them. <laughs> I was like, that's not Good my desire. Them. It will never <laughs> be my desire. I, if I get too many clients, I'll just be like, sorry, you're going to have to wait. Yeah. Right. Because I'm very aware of the things that I want. And I think. I think that is something good that other people need to be more confident in is like, what do you want? But then stick to it. Don't let other people like change your minds, right? Like other people come and be like, oh, well, I think you should do this or I'm not sure you need to, you know, and it's like, listen, this is my life. And at the end of the day, you are responsible for how you feel, right? And I think a lot of times we feel um, upset or frustrated because people aren't supporting our dreams. Right. And it's like, we've got to support our own dreams. You've got to be your own cheerleader because unfortunately, not all the time in life, people are going to be there for you. So, so they will. And if you have like a good support system, like that is amazing. And you should be grateful and really appreciate those people in your life who who are in support of your cool. dreams. But if you don't have those people, a, stop talking, stop telling your business, stop telling your dreams because all they're going to do is like pour water on your fire, your cool. inner flame. Don't let people kill your dreams. Keep it to yourself. Focus. Do what you got to do. And maybe at the end you show up and you're like, hey, look what I did. Or maybe not. Maybe some yeah. things can be personal. Like we're always Ooh. trying to show off, show oh. to everybody. Keep some things for yourself. And just that <laughs> inner contentment, that inner joy. You're saying stuff that a lot of young people, very young people have never heard before. Maybe you could keep that to yourself. <laughs> 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 they never heard that before. You know, I, I mean, I heard yeah. this growing up plenty, you know, but you know, you got to think for people growing up in this time, very, very young people, they're being socialized into sharing everything that yeah. they do, all the accomplishments, even some of the stuff you're like, wow, you really should keep that to yourself. Uh, like <laughs> the discernment. And and sometimes uh -huh. I think we're telling people you need to broadcast everything about your life. You document your life. My yeah. other thing is like, OK, if you want to do that, that's up to you. Uh, but actually, there's quite a few people who don't want to do that. Yeah. And and that's OK. There's diversity in thoughts and approaches to life. And I think that's kind of going back a little bit to the social media thing. It's 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 almost like a group think mentality. You need to be like this. You need to post all the time. You need to be engaged all the time. Like that sounds exhausting to me, actually. Absolutely. And, and just miserable. And then you're like living for metrics. Right. And like, that metrics. is the worst. Like, Ugh. oh my gosh, I lost a follower today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't like, I was, I, so I follow, I had a secret account on social media where none of my friends knew about it. Even if they happened to find it, I was not accepting their request. And it was just for me to kind of follow a couple of people that I personally wanted to follow. And this is like when I was a new mom and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And yeah. I just found a couple other new moms. So I'm like, at least we're all struggling together. <laughs> like for me and also sometimes I got ideas from yeah. them and and stuff right but like some of them are influencers too and they would be like oh my gosh guys the engagement's down I need you to go comment on the post I need this and you know they've turned it into a business for them so fine yeah. but I'm like ah oh, like that would just bother me it's, it seems like icky to have to beg yeah. me to go like your thing right like if you're gonna post just post because you want to yeah and i remember i remember this lady on linkedin i forget her, helen helen somebody and she was teaching this linkedin course and she's like she just posts whatever she wants to post she's like i don't care about what the outcome is yeah and i think that that's a very freeing mentality and if you can adopt that even just like a little bit like even if you can only adopt that to 10 percent, like sure. so 10 percent when i post things 10 percent of the time i'm not going to care i think it would free you up a lot like just mentally to just do something because you want to without holding to how other people are, are going to respond or what the metrics are going to say. Most definitely. I wanted to pivot a little bit to um, kind of like the state of wellness, uh, like how you've seen wellness change from the past, your experiences in wellness from the past to what you see now. And then last part, what you'd like to see for the future. Mm -hmm. So I think even talking about wellness is the change in itself because I <laughs> think point. 
Um, nobody was talking about wellness. You're just doing your thing, right? People are just all struggling, like <laughs> behind closed doors, and nobody was talking about it. And 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 along with wellness, we could put mental health and wellness together, right? And I actually think mental health started being talked about first. So people were talking about anxiety, they're talking about depression, they're talking about really severe stress and stuff like that. But then the wellness part of it came after because it's like a lot of this stuff is preventative. If we yeah. would just organize our lives and do things to kind of fill our cups from the beginning, we wouldn't actually get to this mental health crisis, yeah. and, right? And so I think when we see that our healthcare system is so taxed, right? Oh. You, you, you can't get a doctor's appointment, can't even find a doctor. The hospitals are, are treating people in the hallways or just, you know, oh. like there's hospitals closing, um, at True. least in my area, closing because they don't have enough staff. And in my True. mind, I'm like, what in the world? Like, you, you, I could never have imagined imagine that? Oh, as a child <laughs> hearing about a, I didn't even think that was legal. I was like, I think that, that was allowed? possible when I was growing up. Like, oh, they have to keep these things open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you know. like, you know, but we don't even see like even those healthcare professionals, they're so burnt out themselves yeah. because they are taking care of everybody else and not taking care of their own yeah. selves. And so I think this is what is just I think this is what COVID has exasperated is if you don't focus on your own well-being, it's only a matter of time before you crack and whoever else is under you. So if you are a family, if you're the leader of your family and you crack, guess what? Your children crack, okay? And your extended family cracks too. So what you need to do, and I think a lot of times, and especially as Black people, I think a lot of times we feel pressure to be strong and we have all these messages and our ancestors, this and that. And it's like, we're trying to be strong for the family, strong for everybody else. Cause we all know somebody has got some kind of issue and everybody's That's coming right. to us for the help. You know what I mean? It's just, it, we have a different experience, but sometimes you have to say, listen, I'm really sorry, but I just actually can't. Like, I don't have the capacity to help you. I've got to take care of me now. And it's not from a place of selfishness. It's from a place of responsibility. I don't prioritize my own well being. I'm going to spiral downwards and who's going to check on me that. Right. And so I think, at this point, what I'm seeing now is like a lot of people talking about, okay, so a lot of people are talking about <laughs> self-care. What I would like to uh-huh. see is changes at the lifestyle level in terms of your boundaries, in terms of what you accept in your life so that self-care is a way of being as opposed to like, oh, I'm just going to do this right now. Because I'm still, I'm just seeing like a, almost like a hypocrisy still. So it's like, oh, I did this for self-care, but then I'm stressed and I'm burnt out. Yeah. So then make a you have to make a change, right? Like and I think some people they they want to they, they want to do surface level treatment, treatment right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm going to take the day off. I'm going to have a wellness day for myself. I'm going to go on a retreat for a weekend. They come back and they haven't changed the fundamental things in their life that are causing them to not feel well overall. So then you you're not truly moving forward. All you've done is put a band-aid on it. And what I want us to see is like, let's rip off the bandaid. Let's figure out what exactly is impacting our well-being. Let us drill down and figure those things out and see what fun, what shifts can we make at that foundational level so that we can then build our lives in a way that overall reflects a more well state of being. Understanding that, of course, things are going to happen in life. There's always going to be things shaking up because that's just how life is. But if we have a good foundation, you'll be able to sustain whatever is coming your way. Or you'll be able to at least bounce back. Bounce, you know, Because I mean? yeah. sometimes life just knocks you down. Right? For sure. For sure. <laughs> You're like, okay, life, you win this round. But you can get up and like, <laughs> let's right. try round two, you That's know? Right. You know what's just so funny? I just, no one was talking about this way back in the day. It's kind of crazy to have the perspective of like growing up and go, oh, not one person was talking about this. No one was talking about being well taking care of yourself on a holistic level. Yeah. It was like non-existent. It's crazy. People just suffering to themselves constantly. And now it's it's like, it's sad, right? And now it's kind of like, it's popular. And now I see the machine brewing where uh, it's, there's a big monetary aspect to it where it's like, hey, you know what? People are now into wellness. Let's do a retreat company. You know, let's do, you know, let's create these crazy products because the people want to be well. Let's give somebody yeah. this wax. It may or may not work, you know. But Listen, that capitalist system, it's yeah. always going to be there. Always and be you there. have to fight it. You have to yeah. fight it because 
um, anywhere a dollar can be made, like right. it tarnishes what should be a beautiful thing, you know? Right. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So we're kind of in that um, talk about it consumer phase of wellness. I'm just, I have, I'm curious where that, go- I love that we're talking about it actually, because they're, they're, like you said, that was great. There's literally nothing before. I mean, who did you talk to in the past about any of this stuff? They'd be like, well, you know, you just get old, you know, and uh, just deal with life, you know, it's, uh, you know, bad stuff. Yeah, happens, I, I guess people talk to the wall. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I actually don't know what were your outlets. Like, I doing? know if you're a person of faith, you pray, but right. if you're not, I have I have no clue. What is that output? Like, what do you do? Right. To t- I, I think there's just we don't even realize how many people have just gone through life just coasting, being coasting. miserable, being stressed or unwell. And like they're just waiting to die so that they can be done with just it. Just existing. I gave you a they're good example existing. the conversation around sleep. OK, when I was growing up, it was non-existent to talk about sleep. And in fact, as I got older into my teens and my 20s, it was a badge of honor to not sleep to stay up Mm -hmm. as long as possible and be as productive as possible. That whole thing has shifted in the last 15, 20 years. We know how important sleep is, you know, something we've been doing forever. (laughs) Like you objectively know you feel terrible if you don't, but for some reason we're like, eh, you know, and now it's an integral part of the wheel of wellness. So yeah. like we're just coming online to like what it means to be well. It's strange. It's like, no, it's true great. though. Like even my <laughs> friends, it's like just the other day we went out and my friend was like, oh, it's nine o'clock. I should be in bed now. And I remember I was like, you go to sleep at nine? She's like, yeah, 830 <laughs> if I can. And I was like, oh, like I got to work on that. Like, yeah. but like when you do get proper rest, you feel so much more restored, yes. but it's like, we don't even give ourselves permission for the things that are basic. I think we've forgotten basic. some of the yes. Basic things. And you know why? Because how do people commercialize on sleep? It's a little bit harder, right? Like yeah. even the bed, maybe you, the people who make beds, but how often are you buying a new mattress? Right, right exactly. Right? Like, do you true. know what I mean? So, so it's not that easy to cap. So they need you to be like, no, you need products. You need food. You need yeah. organic food. You need paleo food. You need gluten free. Right. But then this one has the gluten. You need uh, the exercise, but like not, not, not the good old, you know, the jumping sure. jacks that worked for right. like our whole life. No, now you got to do like, the TRX with Pilates, with the yeah. this, with the that, because people are thinking, how can I make more money off of you? Yeah. And if you're well, you're actually taking away from the system. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> people who are sick, they spend a lot of money. Like, uh, true. hello, do you know how many people pay a lot of money for medications? Oh, that it's is incredible. a booming industry. They don't want you to be well. They don't want you to be well. They want you to be stuck on pills. They want you to be stuck on injections, stuck on yeah. therapies, things like they can monthly just keep charging your card. It's uh, It always reminds me of the uh, Chris Rock stand-up many years ago. Is this no money in a cure? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, you want to, you got to be on that wheel. Yeah. And I, we're on the consumer wheel, capitalistic wheel of wellness I mean, I'm hopeful for the future. I think this the having the conversation is incredible. But like what would be idea? Like if you had you were like, okay, this is what I would like to see it be as we move forward, humans move forward uh as a species, what would that look like? Big picture, whether it's like how we build cities for wellness, parks, how do we what what is it? So I actually wouldn't go big picture with this because for me, I'm always like a grassroots level person. Mm. And I think I change goes both ways, but I always adopt the mind of like change happens from the bottom and and goes to the Mm. top. And for me, I think it's people, if people could truly tap into their own sense of well-being and to their own sense of what they want out of life and that they were able to live out that vision or live out that dream in a radical and disruptive way, I think it dismantles the hold that society has mm. over us. But it takes such a level of empowerment and it's a collective empowerment because I can do it all by myself, but I'm not changing the system. But if everybody can empower their own selves and starts to live out their vision of wellness, the collective would shift society, right? And so that that would be my hope. And and just that each each person would would realize that they are deserving of a well life. Yeah. Like I think a yeah. lot of people don't think that they're deserving of it, that, that they're not worthy of yeah. it. And it's like, no, like you deserve to be well, to be joyful, to be happy, to have peace. Like these are all things I think that we are 100% deserving of. 
That's such a good point. And, and I also made me think of like when you said, uh, you know, the person was like, oh, it's what time is it? I got to go to bed like more of that without uh -huh. people shaming people for that and saying uh -huh. like, why are you going to bed so early? Like and people puffing their chest are going because I want to feel good in the morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's like that, I think, is part of the collective. If like one person says it, then another person. Goes, yeah, it is cool to sleep get eight hours of sleep, seven, eight hours, like we get that little trickle, then it starts yes. to go, oh, okay, then, uh, then a community rises up and say, you know what, we're going to change our school times because of this. This yeah. is important. You know, we know what the four-day work week. Oh, right. that's a big, that's a macro level thing that I think right. should happen. Right. I think there should be a four-day work week. I'm very passionate about this because I think people need more times with their families or with themselves. Yeah. And I think that there's just like an imbalance and I, again, a cap, everything goes back to capitalism. You're sure. really to blame for a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, I had the fortune of living in Antigua for about seven years, tiny little island in the Caribbean. It was about 100,000 people. And, you know, I moved there as an adult. So it was really interesting because, of course, I already know all my ways of being and I already know the hustle, hustle mode for the West and stuff. And so when you get just, you know, put in a society that does not, <laughs> follow that it can right. really throw you off <laughs> and like you know if you've ever gone on vacation in the caribbean you mm -hmm. know that's island time thing is is so real it's real and it can be so extremely frustrating when you <laughs> are from the other side but you know what after a while of living there you just adapt because there's no point in rushing nobody else is rushing with you right it's like you doing your own thing and it's <laughs> impossible to change everybody right. else so then you're like okay but what i realized is like people were just content like if work ends up four three forty five they're packed up sitting there ready to go they're not working the overtime like very rarely yeah. like obviously there's always certain jobs like in the hospital and stuff where you know but in general as a society no they're not working overtime they're definitely not working on the weekends don't yeah. even that's not even a it's <laughs> but it wouldn't even be an ask for the most part unless you sure. work in a in a store right because then for shopping but even still it's like things some like the banks used to close at like two o'clock and i would mm -hmm. be like um it's the middle of the day. I'm just not understanding how a bank could actually be closed, like for the whole island. Like, yeah, yeah. I just don't understand. But, you know, they just have certain practices. It's like by five o'clock, like all the stores are closed. You, you yeah. can only go to the grocery store. Like, do you know what I mean? So um, these things, over time, I was like, I just started to observe and I'm like, oh, but people spend so much time with their families. Yeah. Like they know how their friends are doing. You could just drive up to a friend. You just sit in your car. You're talking out the mm -hmm. window. You're not in a rush to go somewhere. You don't have a long list of to do things, right? Like you're just going to go home and chill. And I was like, there is such freedom here. Like people are just yeah happier. So I, I think, um, we have to question our own beliefs, but also what are the beliefs of the society that we live in? Yes. And how do we uh, how do we navigate that, especially if there's not alignment? Like maybe you want to live a different life, but society you, the, where you live, right, or the people that you're around, that society is a certain way. You have to think about: Do I need to move? Do I need to right. talk to different people? How can I at least resist this and still choose things that are more in alignment for me? Most definitely. You know what's <laughs> Let me think of how many people for so many years have gone through being born and have died and have rarely saw their family because all they did was work. They literally just yeah. worked themselves their entire life and they were non-existent for their family, all for the goal of work or that. It's yeah. insane how many parents have not seen their children most of their lives growing up. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, a lot of people it's like they're like okay i'm just gonna do it to retirement and then in retirement i'm yeah. gonna spend the time i'm gonna give it back we don't know when our life ends no like i i wish like i'm very aware of the concept of mortality and understanding that i could go at any point but but i think in general as a society we just think that life goes on and on it's like and then <laughs> that comes in and we're like oh my gosh like how did that happen how did this like, happen well <laughs> yeah. it is guaranteed to us it's at guaranteed. this point right nobody yeah. has figured it out so I think it's about living in the now because you just don't know when. Like, I think all of us know someone who's either passed away just before what we thought their time should be or probably before what they thought their time yeah. should be or someone who's just lost mobility or ability, right? And they become very injured or sick or something like that. So they can't do those things. So a lot of times we we delay our dreams or we're like, oh, we're going to do it one day and oh, we're going to do this as if we're in control of all <laughs> of our lives. And it's like, no, so- 
we have the now, live in the now, make those changes and adjustments, spend the time with the people that you want to spend time with yourself, down right? Yourself. Slow down, just slow down and, and understand it's not a race, just be present in the moment. And that way your whole journey can be enjoyable instead of just like in 20 years or when I retire, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we know general we know that the average person has 51 years of healthful living, meaning they have functional independence, are generally do not have a chronic disease. I mean, that's not a long time. And so you think, well, and retirement age is generally in someone's 60s, like, okay, you're waiting for something that may not be a good time for you, actually. It may be a time of a yeah. lot of pain and difficulty. So you know, step back and really look, I think it's the whole point of this kind of is like step back from the wheel. Everybody's on yeah. the wheel. I know you need to get off at the train station. Get off the wheel. Get off the wheel for a couple minutes and say, what am I and just pause. doing? Just, just pause, pause and, and just assess. Like assess. you just, yeah, you have to step back and just look and see what is happening in my life right now. And how do I feel about that? <laughs> right. And if you're happy with it, then hey, get back on the wheel and keep yeah, going. Yeah. But if you're not, understand that what like ask yourself what changes can i make like this is the wake up sometimes in life we're fortunate enough to get a wake up call yeah and other times we're not and you'll see a lot of people change lives right like something will happen to them like for instance that that might be worked in the corporate world and they're super stressed yeah. and they get a heart attack and they're like oh my god i, I gotta live my life differently yeah. i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that like do it now like yeah. you know what i mean let this conversation be a wake up call it's not gonna jar you in any kind of negative way but like, why do we always have to wait for that huge, big, right. awful moment to make the change in our life? Like <laughs> right. you can do it now. You can, you can do it now, even if it's just small things. Like even if it's just that you're going to take more time for yourself or you're going to spend time with loved ones, you're going to be out in nature, you're going to sleep longer, yeah. you're going to drink more water, right? Like just take one step yeah. of something that can impact your life in a positive way. Most definitely. I have to tell you, this is uh, probably one of the better conversations I've had about wellness, Natalie. <laughs> I think, you know, what, just, you're, you're very intuitive. I think you you come from a place of like reality. <laughs> Actually, it's like, this, it's just, I don't know. I'm on the, this level. Yeah. Right, I just doesn't, I'm not in the clouds. It doesn't feel like marketing. It doesn't feel like, well, this is like, oh, everybody should align. And this It's like, let me tell you the reality of this. Yeah. And I love, and I'm glad you said that because yeah. that's who I am as a person. And so that means I'm in alignment with, with You're who I am. Um, yeah. That's great. So, and with, with my values, right. Too. Right. But I, I think, um, I think sometimes we mystify things or we fancy yeah, yeah. it up and it's like, let's just get back to the basics <laughs> so that everyone can understand and like, just be clear. Like, we make things way more complicated. And some people, it's because they want to write a book. So they've got sure. to put a special formula and a special, you know, mantra on it. Or some people, they want to sell you a program so you can only get access to that that key thing if you buy their program. And it's like, right. I don't, like, that doesn't drive me no. in life at all. No. Again, you got to know who you are. But, like, I feel everyone has a purpose. And I, I feel like I'm living out my purpose by having these kinds of conversations right. and getting to talk about wellness and getting other people to think about what wellness means to them and then taking action on it. Like that lights me up. And, and uh, so I'm very grateful to be able to do this kind of work and, and just, the, but it's not work. It's to me, it's just like, it's just, it's conversations yeah. and, and changes. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Well, I'm grateful that we had a chance to come together and chat about this. So um, any parting words or ways people, you know, can connect with you, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. So if you want to connect with me, I also have my own podcast. Um, it's called From a Full Cup. And that's the idea is that we can't keep pouring out and just doing everything for everybody else. Our cup is going to become empty. We know that. We know the phrase, you can't pour from an empty cup. So yeah. the other side of it is, well, what do you do? You've got to fill your cup. You've got to be intentional about taking action to manage your own well-being and to pour back into yourself. So if you want to take a listen to that, it's on, you know, Spotify, Apple, all the places. And um, other than that, in theory, I'm on Instagram, <laughs> Natalie Mullen. In theory. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> LinkedIn, Natalie Mullen. Um, you know, and if you see a post, you see a post. And if not, good old email. You know what? Like, I, I really email. am an email person. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm all <laughs> about it. Lines. Like, we like LinkedIn, we like email. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. You know, Natalie at from a full cup.com. I love to talk. I would be happy to just have a conversation with you. So that's how Fantastic. you can find me. <clears throat> Natalie, thank you so much. Seriously, very meaningful conversation. I enjoyed it quite a bit. 
Thank you for being on. Yeah, thank you for having me.